it's time to get your arrows popping. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is about solving linear equations part three. Part three discusses solving multi-step linear equations, guys. And that's exactly what we'll be doing with the following examples. You have the two examples that we'll be digging into today so you can get a sneak peek before we get into it. But first, I wanted to remind you that we'll be utilizing the following properties of equality to get the job done. That's right plus a surprise property that I want you guys to really pay attention to when we get there. So as a reminder, you'll have the addition property of equality, the subtraction property of equality, the multiplication property of equality, the division property of equality, all at our disposal to isolate our variables. That is correct, get them by themselves. So we have problem number one, where we have seven X plus four minus 15 X equals 36. In this problem, your first step is to analyze what is going on on the left and right sides of your equation while at the same time paying attention to which terms have the variable that you're trying to solve for. Notice that our first and third term on the left side of the equation contain the variable x. Well, you'll want to get that variable x by itself. So all of our steps moving forward are to make sure that we're going to one, condense the terms that have the variable that we're trying to isolate, as well as eliminate any terms from that side of the equation that do not contain our variable. So we'll begin with the following. Notice how seven x and negative 15 X contain the same variable X to the first power. That means that these two terms, seven X and negative 15 X are like terms. You're gonna combine those first. Combining positive seven X and negative 15 X together, you'll end up with negative eight X. Bring down the positive four and this equals to 36. So within that first step, we were able to combine those two terms that contained our variable X into one term that contains our variable X. The next thing we want to do is get that particular term by itself. The term that has our variable, in other words, the negative eight X, we want it by itself. Itself. But lo and behold, we have a positive four on the left side of the equation as well. We want to eliminate that. How do you do that? The subtraction property of equality, guys. Go ahead and subtract four to both sides of the equation like so. Then we'll simplify. We'll be bringing down that negative eight X and combining these additive inverses, the negative four, the positive four together, those will cancel out to zero and you'll bring down your equal sign and 36 minus four gives you a result of 32. From here, we have negative eight X equals 32. That's our simplified equation. And notice that we have the coefficient negative eight multiplying on our variable X. Well, the opposite operation of that is division, right? So we'll be dividing both sides by the exact same coefficient, that exact same value of negative eight in order to isolate our variable. So I'll be dividing both sides by negative eight, like so, thank you. And the negative eights will cancel out. Yes, they will. Go ahead and bring down the variable X. Now it is isolated. You have a positive one X to the first power, which is exactly what we wanted. And on the right side of the equation, a positive 32 and a negative eight, when we are dividing those values, you'll end up with a negative four as a result. Red, box it people, just like that. That's example one. And now let's move on to our second example here. This problem is very important to me because I'm able to share with you my favorite property in the world. And that is the distributive property. I love the distributive property. That is our surprise property for this video, guys. Without further ado, notice that we have two terms on the left side of the equation. What do I mean by that? The first term is the variable X. The second term is this product of negative three times the quantity of six minus X. 
All of that is considered one term because multiplication combines elements into one term. It doesn't separate them into multiple terms. Oh, no, it doesn't. So as long as negative three is multiplying on that set of parentheses, all of that combined is considered one term. Then, of course, on the right side of the equation, you have the one term, that negative 14. All right. So let's go ahead and dig in. The first thing you'll do is you'll bring down that variable X, that first term. Then, as promised, you're going to be distributing the negative three. That's right, the negative three. You want to multiply that value inside of the parentheses. So keep in mind that the value on the outside of the parentheses is not just three, it's negative three. And that's why I'm circling it so that you'll remember that's what we're multiplying each and every term within the parentheses by. So that means that negative three times six gives you negative 18. Negative three times negative x, that's a positive three x and you'll bring down the right side, that negative 14. So now on the left side, we end up with x minus 18 plus 3x after doing my favorite property and getting those arrows popping, people. That's exactly what we did. We got our arrows popping, and now we're gonna be looking for like terms. So after you distribute, always go to the next step looking for like terms. And that's exactly what I have. So I'll be combining the positive x and the positive 3x together to give me 4x minus 18, which equals to negative 14. From here, we're looking at isolating the term 4x. We want to get that by itself. So I'm going to use the addition property of equality and add 18 to both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. We'll be bringing down 4x Combining our additive inverses, that negative 18, that positive 18, those opposites, they'll combine to cancel out. And then this will be equal to positive four. That's right, the result of negative 14 and 18 when combined. Remember that unlike sign subtract when you're combining terms together, and you'll keep the sign of the bigger number. So the reason why the result is positive four is because the 18 is positive and it's a bigger value. Its absolute value is a larger value than the absolute value of negative 14. So we always keep the sign of the bigger number, okay? And from here, we're witnessing that we have a coefficient of four. The number that's multiplying on our variable will be dividing both sides by four, like so. Simplifying, we'll be able to bring down our variable x, which equals to positive one, because four divided by four is positive one, guys. And now we'll be red boxing it. And this is our solution for problem number two, guys. And that concludes our video, people. So go ahead and stick around for part four. In the meantime, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fort Ben Tutoring. Peace. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you hanging out with Fort Ben Tutoring. Like the video, comment, and subscribe.